okay. everybody's favorite kayfabe column, Palmer's Picks. This Palmer's Picks is about Christmas recommendations. So he goes through and recommends several books, most of which we have talked about up to this point in previous columns. Um, we can kind of run through some of those. Uh, the first one he recommends is Cerebus. And specifically, he talks about like the big phone book collections that we've mentioned. These are big collections of, of longer stories that ran in the Cerebus monthly book. A couple of good starting points, Jacob's story or Melmoth. Melmoth was my first Cerebus read, and I would recommend that. It's an interesting book. It stands on its own pretty well. He recommends Jeff Smith's Bone. Um, we mentioned this last week, and it's still in its infancy. I think there are six or seven issues out at this point. Yeah. So he recognizes pretty early on it's a special book. And we're going to see more and more coverage, of course, as Wizard goes on. Uh, that is a book that catches catches fire. Bone is one of those uh, phenomenon that that even when we speak to Jeff Smith, he can't like clearly let you know like what the what caused the tipping point. It's 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 sort of just this magical thing. It's kind of like Harry Potter's that way too, where um, try as you may, like even J.K. Rowling can't explain to you like how this thing caught on in in the fashion that it did you know what i'm saying like i i would love to kind of dig deeper to just try try to see you know the 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 stuff that was involved to make it such a big success but it was just a time and place thing i guess harry potter is weird because it was out for a year before it really took off so it is strange like some connection was made somewhere that that kind of unlocked the world for that bone i think it's different you know like we talk, we've talked about Jeff Smith uh, in some of our other shows, and I don't know if he realized how different it was than everything else at the comic book stores, but I think the difference is something that retailers and readers, you know, recognized immediately. And, and at that point, if they give it a look because it stands out and it's different than everything else, they find a really good quality comic. So I think those two things are probably the combination. Um, and it doesn't hurt that it's at a time when the market's up, you right. know, when there are lots of books and lots of new readers peeking in. There wasn't anything like Bone. So if you were looking for an all-ages book or something that was a little more reader-friendly, not a lot of competition for Bone. And it's a great story. You know, if the retailers were reading what they were selling, like, I can see why they would get behind that book immediately. Um, after Bone, he recommends Mouse, which I think the collected editions of Mouse, both volumes are relatively new. I think I picked Mouse up around this time. So the second volume may have been collected around 92 or so. Uh, I bought them in a slipcase, pre-ordered. You know, it must have gotten a good a good push. Probably not the most cheerful book to read on Christmas, but <laughs> heck of a comic. Um, next up, he recommends Skin. These are funny titles for Christmas recommendations. It is a heck of a title, man. So, uh, <laughs> Skin, published by Tundra, I believe. This is a collection of... Peter Milligan and Brendan McCarthy. Yeah. But you can see the reproduction of the skin cover and some examples of the artwork that you would find inside. Man, is this different for something that, again, if thinking of what Marvel was publishing at the time, I mean, that's just... No no comic book looked like this Not at, at the all, time. Man. Not too many of them look like this now. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of... And this is Carol Swain as well. Like, it's sort of unclear, like where the divisions of labor kind of end. Um, it seems like a true collaboration because I don't, I've never seen any other Brandon McCarthy comics that quite look like this. Yeah. And I certainly have never seen any other Carol Swain comics that quite look like this. Um, five fingers and a thumb. Ethylidomide was a motherfucker, man. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, the, the preamble to this story talks about how controversial it was, how many publishers it, it went through who showed interest in the book and then passed on it because yeah. it was just too controversial. So, but, but what most <laughs> of the stuff was controversial though. Like, was really like it was going to be Fleetway that was going to publish it initially, and just the way that um, it handled uh, like you know the British like class system was something that they were uncomfortable with. And then Vertigo pu uh, passed for whatever reason, and ultimately it was uh, Tundra that had the nuts to. Uh, There's enough of a cultural difference where Eastman didn't have any problems you know, talking about, you know, the British class system. Yeah, there, there wasn't going to be any blowback to the turtles from skin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on through his list, 
The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by Mike Plug. Max Immortal by Rick Veach. We're going to be um, looking closer at Max Immortal in the coming months. That's something that uh, Tom Palmer indicates here at the end of the article, that there is a uh, Rick Veach column, you know, focusing on Rick Veach coming up. That's going to be a fun one for us to get into. Yeah, absolutely. But again, that's a funny Christmas book to open. It's a lot of a lot of violence in those books. Mike Allred's Madman, uh, specifically Madman Adventures, which is a new color series. And Frank Miller's Sin City, which I guess was recently collected in a book. You know, it had run in serialization in Dark Horse Presents, collected in a book. This was a book that my first comic book store, which was not much of a comic book store, is kind of a closet. Uh, but he would do shows. You know, a lot of comic book stores will go to comic book shows to sell more, to buy more. Sin City was a book that was on my list. It's like, dude, please find this book. And it took him a while, but he did find me one. Um, I was just so excited for, for Miller's Sin City around this time period. So this is uh, 1992, and I, I would say that 1995, that was like the best Christmas I ever had, right? And I'm so deep into comics at that point in time, and I had all comics on my Christmas list. So the stuff that I got sort of mirrors a lot of these Palmer's picks. I got like every uh, Cerebus trade that was available at the time, which is probably 10, 10 books or so. I got um, the hardcover for uh, Big Fat Kill, would have been out in like December 95. Um, I already had Dame to Kill for and the, the Sin City original book, but that um, winter was the winter that Silent Night came out. So I got that one. It was brand new. That was like the first like brand new Sin City comic I got. I got uh, four trades of uh, Appleseed, like the complete Appleseed translation that, that Dark Horse did. And then um, I got the uh, the, Ma the Madman issues from Dark Horse that I needed. Like I started collecting it at about eight or nine. So like the earlier ones kind of came, uh, you know, from Santa Claus and stuff like that. Um, but that is like the era when I was all in with comics. There was no more buying toys. There was no more buying video games. It was all art supplies and comics from December 95 forward. Basically, like, all of 95, you know, forward. It's like, serious business. Business. I'm going to grow up to become a cartoonist. And I wanted, like, a nice wide uh, library of stuff to look at. You know? That is a great collection of stuff. It is pretty pretty, pretty broad for that time period. It sort of put me on the radar here in town with the comic shops. Yeah. Because like there are these like two parents like coming to these shops like you know with a list and all the shop owners were like who the heck what's your kid? Who's How your kid? How old is he? Yeah like like <laughs> who the heck is and and so like after um I got all those books man like my parents like they took me to the comic shops and like introduced me to like the shop owners and shit like that and to this day I still know these people That's man awesome. and and have great relationships with those guys man it's it's interesting cuz some of those stores they have to judge right Why if not? you worked at a comic book store you'd have to judge you know the books you like or think a lot of you know you couldn't shut that off and uh I've had that experience in stores where it's like the uh the Cla the Simpsons comic book store kind of guy very curmudgeonly, seems like he doesn't want you there. And then whenever I pull out, like, Jack Kirby's Skymaster collection, totally changes, man. Just instantly thaws out, and it's like, we're on the same team. Um, that sounds like a real story. That I, is a real story. D did it happen at Ives? Yes. Okay, like, so, like, when I was a little kid, it's the, the Kirby is the, the, the key the, to, to, like, get in. Because when I was a little dude, like, I had, um, in, you know, I... I make it a point to go there and raid the comics that are under the stairs because they're like 25 cents and you will always find Kirby comics from the 70s forward and I, I would just grab all these Kirby comics and I'm saying like when I was like 95, like 12, 13 and I show up, you know, to the front with like the Kirby comics and then the dude would be like, well, I didn't, and it was that guy that lisps, you know, and he's like, well, I didn't process all these comics yet and, and like he had a bunch to the side and like hooked me up at like a great discount with all this other Kirby stuff, you know? So he's like saw like punk little kid and who's reading good shit by his approval right, right, status. Right. And then and then it's all good from that point forward. You had to keep your image books on the very bottom of that stack. I would get those from Phantom of the <laughs> Attic because they were far less judgmental with me because they got the bulk of that uh that bounty that I just mentioned earlier, man. 